following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verana Media Network. Welcome to Gen XYZ. This is a platform where we talk about contemporary topics or issues based on the youth. Now on this episode, we have two very bright minds, very young minds, I would say, who are here to share their experience on their knowledge on something that they're really passionate about doing. And with that, I would like to invite, and it's my pleasure to have Nethila Nimseth, who is also the founder of Masspreneurs and the very cute uh, marine biologist, uh, Alosha Samararachi. Thank you both of you all for taking the time to join me on the show today. And I'm very excited to have this conversation to you. So Nethila, my first question goes to you. Now you're an owner of a business and the founder of Masspreneurs. Yes. What made you want to get into this side of business and what inspired you? What inspired me to get into Masterpreneurs would be, well, I had to start at the beginning when I first got into business, of then it course. evolved into my own business. So I started as, while appearing when I was very young, a couple of years ago, I appeared in some of my father's uh, YouTube videos uh, because he wanted me to appear in his videos because people wouldn't normally see a young uh, child like me talking about business related topics like this so he thought that people would be surprised and they would take a look at these videos and check them out so that's how it all started then i started get, gaining a little bit of interest on it after doing it for some time another reason i really wanted to do those videos with my father was i would gain 500 rupees every single time i do a video <laughs> I, I was getting paid to do it so after after i did those videos with him my father and i both realized that i can i have a i have a I have the ability to talk a lot, so I can uh, public speak. Mm -hmm. So, we decided to start my own YouTube channel called Cinema and Chat with Nethila, where I talk about, uh, where I talk with these uh, CEOs, entrepreneurs, all these big uh, people who have these successful companies. So, I talk with them and I learn about their past, their skills, what, they, what I can learn from them. And I share them with the younger generation. They watch my videos and they will learn. After that, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think like that, that's where I got to my YouTube yeah. channel. Okay, great. So would you like to tell a little bit about Masspreneurs and what exactly is happening in your website? Okay, so I'll continue from there. So from that Cinema Chat with Netflix YouTube channel, after that I started during the pandemic in 2020 when people, when, when people had nothing to do except hang on social media. So it was a, like a, a good time for me to come in. So then I started on LinkedIn, I started my pro, uh, profile, I opened it up and then I started writing with my father. My father helped me start my profile, write about my skills, my abilities, my interests. So I enter all that and I create a profile and then I start connecting with these CEOs and entrepreneurs on LinkedIn. So that's how I got connected with all these amazing people and LinkedIn helped me with my uh, YouTube channel as well. So after LinkedIn, I realized that there's a lot of kids on, li uh, on LinkedIn who are doing these uh, business related activities just like me. So I decided to open, open a uh, business academy because lots of parents were inquiring on me, asking me whether their child could come with me, come onto my videos and learn how I do these YouTube videos, learn how I interview people. So I saw a business opportunity there. So I created masspreneurs and I started teaching kids about these business related activities. Okay, I'm getting so many follow-up questions to ask you, but before that, I would like to ask little Alosha, how did you find your love towards the ocean, your sea creatures, and when did you decide you wanted to become a marine biologist? So, let's start from the beginning. Yes. So, it all started when I was just four years old. Yes, that's right. So, before that, I wanted to become an astronaut going to outer space and finding aliens and new planets. So that all stopped until I came across news of a new species being discovered deep down in our own planet. So I thought to myself, why should we go 
go out, spend so much time and money to look for aliens on different planets when we have alien creatures on our own planets. I thought about that. <coughs> so, and then I started reading books and gathering information about our oceans. And that is when I decided I wanted to become a marine biologist. And then I started spreading all this knowledge I had gathered in my head and educating people about what our oceans are and why we have to protect them and how important they are. So, Alusha, how has this experience been? How did you start studying about marine biology? How did you get exposed to it? And tell me a little bit about what your favorite animal is in the ocean. So, actually, I don't have a favorite animal because every single animal in the ocean is unique and is special. So, I got into this, like, the thing I sent before. And then I started doing courses to learn more. So not only marine biology, astrobiology, plant biology, and so many other different things. So I was really interested in everything around me. Alosha, you're just not a marine biologist. I heard that you have so many other titles as well. What are the other titles that you have? So I'm an ambassador in the Marine Conservation Network in Santa Barbara, California, USA, and an, a global youth shark ambassador in El Porto Shark in Los Angeles, and an ambassador in the SBN Australia, Great. and so many more other amazing titles. How, do you, how did you get contacted with you know, the international forums? Who exposed you to it? So, so basically, the first thing I got was the Marine Conservation Network, like I said before. Mm -hmm. So, because I did all my amazing and unique videos, I won many competitions in art, writing competitions, and so many other more. So, they found me somehow and they told me to become their ambassador. So I work with Kimberly Ray, who's my boss for now. So I'm having a pretty great time. Oh, great. That's amazing to hear. Now I would like to pose the next question to Nithila. Uh, I heard that you're having a really good time on LinkedIn and you're connecting with people. How has that been going so far? And what are, what are you actually doing on LinkedIn? So LinkedIn is my main business development platform. It's where I basically started my entrepreneurial mm -hmm. journey, I would say that, because that's where I really started showing up and people started noticing me because a lot of people were on social uh, media, as I said, because 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. Everybody's on social media. So that was a good time for me to pop up. And I started connecting with all these entrepreneurs and CEOs. So thanks to LinkedIn, I'm connecting with all these amazing people and other kids because I've met so many other kids and I also am the youngest LinkedIn live streamer in Sri Lanka because I post every day on LinkedIn and I have unlocked a lot of modes on LinkedIn that are that are not available for everyone mm -hmm. so since I post every day I have unlocked LinkedIn's creator mode because I'm I put passion into what I'm posting and I post a lot and I also am a LinkedIn live streamer because I do a lot of videos on LinkedIn so LinkedIn has given me the option so yeah, that's how LinkedIn is helping me out right now. So Alosha, my next question for you. You said that you are a conservative in the, sorry, the Marine Conservation Network in the United States of America. So what is your role exactly there? So my role is, well, I interview all different sorts of people such as scientists, marine biologists, normal biologists, zoologists, and so many other amazing peoples people and a few of them are Miss Vanessa Beasy who studies about sea turtles, April Boyle who studies about sharks and Dr. Daniel Fernando who, who studies about matter rays and Dr. Cruz who found a new species in Sri Lanka, a type of box jellyfish in fact. 
wow that's amazing something which i caught up when discussing with y'all as well before the program y'all were very good friends and y'all are really connecting so well how did y'all get to know each other uh, we got to know each other uh, only the, my fa- my father uh, showed me the, uh, showed me about this Alo- alosha a young marine biologist and uh, he said let's interview this girl because she's doing a lot of amazing things so we interviewed her and then we became good friends so that's how you all know each other so how yes. is your relationship with nithila do you so think he's a really good friend yeah a great friend that's great nithila again coming back to your website of masspreneurs what are the other sites and what are the other applications that people can look for in your website well my website my e-commerce site yeah. yes so in my e-commerce site i have books related to entrepreneurship mm-hmm. I had to uh, go to Google and find all these books written by entrepreneurs, CEOs, all these famous business owners. So I went to Google and I searched and I and my father had a friend who works at a bookshop so he was able to provide me with all the books. So that's also the power of connectivity. See, so my father and me are connected to so many people. I'm connected with Alosha and that's the power of connectivity. So on my website i also have books where are written by famous people famous uh, business owners and they all have lessons in them so i chose very specific books with lots of lessons in them and i entered them there then i check if those books were available with my uh, this friend and uh, we we will put them there for sale and we also have iot devices uh, tech products gadgets uh, coding devices because coding is also a skill that is needed in the future because Nowadays everybody knows how to use PowerPoint, Google Documents or the PowerPoint uh, Word, Word documents. Everybody knows how to use those. And in the future everybody should be able to know how to code. Everybody should be able to, uh, should have a certain amount of skills. So that's how uh, the things that are needed um, time to time, the th- skills that are needed time to time. So we all yeah, and we also have a special section called uh, luxury living where we have uh, like luxury apartments, luxury cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's about I, you told me a little while ago also that you're interested in cars. How did the love for cars come up all of a sudden? The love for cars came from also from my father's <laughs> friend who happened to have a unregistered B, uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz. And since Sri Lanka doesn't get any car imports anymore, no manufacturers are importing anymore, it's all uh, banned and confiscated. So finding an unregistered, unregistered luxury car like that, it's like, it's like hitting a gold mine. So my father's friend, he wanted to sell the car. So my father decided let Nathila do a video on that. So I I got into the car. I I did a small review on it, why you should buy it, and people started getting interested in it. So he, my uh, that uh, that uncle, that father's friend, uh, he also had a, a few other cars, like a couple of more cars, and. I did a few posts on this, not videos, but I did a small post and people were like saying, you're amazing, Nathalie, you're doing a lot of posts on cars. So, yeah. There were so many encouragement notes as well. Yeah, but that was still temporary because uh, after some time I stopped posting about the about the cars. Okay. So, Alosha, now since you're studying about the ocean and everything inside of it, I heard that you're into preservation of the ocean as well and sharks and into the pollution of the marine life as well so what do you think about the pollution here in sri lanka in the oceans we have right now the condition we have so the condition is very very bad so since our ship accidents have affected our marine ecosystems so much now and we're still finding pieces of plastic from those ships in our beaches So this affects our ecosystems a lot like animals getting entangled in plastics great now i think we'll have to go into a short commercial break before we go into the next segment i think our audience also got a little bit of what you guys are doing and what you all are passionate about and this is just alosha who is 10 years old and nethila who's 12 years old after the break we'll discuss further you're watching gen xyz
welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are in discussion with the little Alosha who is a marine biologist and uh, Nethila who is an entrepreneur and the founder of Masspreneurs. Alosha, I think in the first segment you told that you are in love with the ocean and the creatures there. So you are also an ambassador in protecting sharks also. Can you tell our audience a little bit about sharks and why the ocean needs sharks? Because everybody is scared about sharks and they think that they are a predator, right? So yeah. why do you think the ocean needs sharks? Well, actually, sharks are a keystone species. So think of a stone hinge and the keystone. The keystone is the thing holding everything up. And if we remove that keystone, the whole hinge collapses. As apex predators, sharks As apex predators, sharks take care of the sick and the weak. And they also take care of the fish populations, making sure it doesn't overflow. So sharks are a very important creature to our ecosystem. Nathila, can you pass me my box? Yes, sure. Okay. So I have got a question for you. What is this? I am assuming it's a shark tooth. It is. This is a real shark tooth of a great white shark. Wow. And guess what's this? Another shark tooth? Yes. It's an exact shark tooth replica of a megalodon shark. These guys existed a couple million years ago and they are completely wiped out. No one knows if they're still out there. So Alosha, how did you get these teeth from sharks? So this, this tooth um, has been sent to me by mail. And this one, I made a replica with my father. Wow, that's amazing. All right, to, we'll hold on that thought and Nethila, I would like to know now since you're running a business and you're doing something very influential because you're teaching students about entrepreneurial skills and everything. Uh, so have you had any bad comments because you're a 12 year old and has it been uh, difficult for you to like convince people of what you do? I wouldn't say there are bad comments, it's mm -hmm. just that people aren't sure if I'm really if I should really be doing this because I am a 12 year old mm -hmm. and I should be I should be doing this I should be playing games with my friends sorry <clears throat> I should be playing games with my friends I should be going out and playing I should be drawing I should be playing a musical instrument or something like that so then I tell everybody who who comes and comments on my videos people come and comment on my LinkedIn post my videos saying I'm losing my childhood, I should be playing with friends and things like that. I shouldn't be doing these business related activities. Then I tell them that I have balanced my day out. I do my schoolwork, I do a, a few hours of schoolwork, I, I, play, I play, I play the piano, I play games, I always have fun. I make sure that I have balanced everything. So once I tell them that they are satisfied that I'm not losing my childhood and I'm enjoying it and I'm capable of doing these business related activities, they say, okay, good luck. That's another point that you mentioned, school time. Now, children your age needs to be in school and doing your studies and your homeworks. So, Alosha, where do you find the time to study about this marine biology? So, so I minimize my homework by using this stra strategy. So, I actually do my homework during the class, which makes, which saves a ton of time for me. So. How, how do you manage to study your schoolwork and about marine biology? Yeah, I make these small short notes, which are small information of all my subjects. So whenever there's a test around, I just read them out. Nethila, what is your strategy? Now, you must be also getting a lot of homework from school. And how do you manage of your course. business and schoolwork at the same time? Yeah, I do get that. I, I don't really have a strategy. I just I like, uh, so we basically have an interval, which is about 45 to 50 minutes long. During that interval, I do like the big homework, like long, like an essay or something like that. And the sh short homework, I save it to do later, so later because I can finish it off quickly. Do you all do any extracurricular activities as well? 
extracurricular activities i play the piano i play badminton i used to play basketball not anymore cuz uh, i played basketball at school now they don't allow it because of the pandemic but I those are my extracurricular oh wait uh, one more thing yeah i also build uh, i think you know legos those uh -huh. uh, small bricks so i built tons of things other than uh, i built guns but my parents don't like guns <laughs> Alosha, what about you? What do you do in your free time? Well, I used to play mini tennis, so nowadays I just read books and find more information. I play with my cats and my pets, so and most of, sometimes about twice a month, uh, I go diving, which is a really, really fun experience. Alosha, what was the support you got from your parents, from your friends? Because you are just ten years old and you are living in Kandy, and the ocean is a little bit far away from where you live. How do you get that time to, you know, go to the ocean, spend some time there? And what's the support you got from your elders? So, everyone basically supported me on my journey. So it was that was that was perfectly fine. But the traveling bit, mm, a little complicated. But about uh, twice a month, I always get an opportunity to go to the sea. So, like, on the 28th of February this year, I will be going to a research center in Vu Resources Trust with my good friend, Dr. Daniel Fernando. Wow, that's amazing. Are you looking forward to it? Yes, I'm looking very forward to it because it has lots of eco-friendly things like riding bicycles and other stuff. Wow, that's great. Nithila, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face now when you created your website and when you're interacting with people? What is the biggest challenge you face so far? The biggest challenge would be when people say that I'm too young to be doing these kind of works. But there is another challenge where some, uh, there are, I have to balance my school work sometimes. Mm -hmm. Even though I say I balance it a lot, there are some times where I have school projects where I do with my friends and we have to create a group and we have to work like that. So there are times like that, but those are still very rare. There are also times when, when I put a post about my website or I put a post about a uh, car, sometimes people come and promote their website on that post that I put, mm -hmm. which it's not very good. I mean, like, so I, I, I leave the comment most of the times, but if they really start promoting it and spamming it in their comments, I'd have to delete the comments because they're literally coming onto that post and they're putting talking about their website. So, kind of unfair if I think of it. How supportive it. are your parents on this and in following your passion? They, they are very supportive, except uh, some, sometimes my uh, mother, she laughs and says, Hey, entrepreneur, come here. <laughs> some, 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 sometimes like that. But they are very supportive. Great. Alosha, now considering the pollution and the protection of sharks, do you think people in the world are doing enough to protect our marines? Well, I don't think they're doing enough mm -hmm. because, so this is mostly because of uh, unregistered politics. So it's a really big problem. So older people don't listen to young children like me. So I think other different people should go against that and say we can do anything we want no matter what age we are that's very true so what is the next step you have taken in order to make people aware about this so i mostly do beach cleanups which are very effective mm -hmm. so when i mostly do beach cleanups so a couple of foreigners come and help me in that so and about twice I have met two foreigners who have seen the lot of pollution around in our beaches and I decided to help them and they were really glad that young people like me wanted to help too. That's amazing. So now both of y'all have YouTube channels as well. When y'all started this YouTube channel, what were the people's comments? How did they take it and were there any negative comments? Were there any barriers? How did you overcome that? So, I'll show you want to go first? Yes. Okay. So, uh, there were lots of comments about how, how much space I had in my mind for all these things. And so, so I'm doing a good job in, in marine biology and 
Not many negative comments because I don't read the comment section that much. What about you, Nebula? Well, uh, same thing as earlier. People were commenting sometimes that I'm still losing my childhood. But there were a lot of positive comments saying, uh, great, thank you, Mike. Uh, because there were lots of kids also, parents who were watching these videos with their kids. And they were saying, great, thank you. We have learned so much from this interview. So mostly a lot of them were positive comments. Something, Nithila, which I wanted to ask you. Why do you want to promote your entrepreneurial skills with other children? Because uh, one of the main reasons is the World Economic Forum has given uh, a bunch of skills, five, uh, five skills, five or ten skills. Uh, those skills are, for example, money management, time management, problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, things like that, uh, coding skills. So, when you learn entrepreneurship, those skills are basically what you learn. When you are, when, as an entrepreneur, you should know how to manage your time, how to manage your money. You should know, uh, you, you should uh, solve problems easily, quickly, because entrepreneurs are people who solve problems. When they solve a problem, uh, they are not looking for money. They solve that problem because they are passionate about solving that problem. When they solve that problem, like, yeah, when they solve that problem, money automatically comes behind them and they earn money from it. So that's what an entrepreneur is. So as an entrepreneur, you learn money management, time management, you solve problems. And when you're an entrepreneur these days, uh, when you're an entrepreneur, you need to have an e-commerce site as well. It's a very obvious thing these days. Everybody's on social media. So when you learn to code, you learn e-commerce. So those are basically the advantages you get from learning entrepreneurship. That is why I encourage everybody to, all these kids to learn entrepreneurship because at a young age when you learn all this and if you start a business or a company at this young age, by the time you are in your 20s or uh, 30s, you will you be a millionaire. I am still shocked to see how both of you all are responding to my questions and the amount of knowledge both of you all have regarding marine biology and entrepreneurship. Nithila, from where do you get this knowledge? How do you study about entrepreneurship? Where is your inspiration coming from? My inspiration, I have, I have two role models. One is my dad, he obviously teaches me a lot. He helps me with my LinkedIn and YouTube. The other one is Elon Musk. He is a problem solver. He is an entrepreneur because Elon Musk, well, when, you, when we say he, he solved a problem, he basically built a rocket where once you launch it into space, part of it comes back to Earth. So you don't have to build a brand new rocket, part of it's still intact and still there. So you don't have to waste so much money and build a brand new one from scratch. Because uh, that time those uh, imported rockets from Russia, when you launch them, they, they crash back in the ocean and they crumble into bits. That's true. So, uh, Alusha, yeah. uh, if I'm not mistaken, you told us that you wanted to become an astronaut. And do you still want to become an astronaut? Well, that's, that's, that's a bit changed now. Uh, since I've discovered astrobiology, which means the study of life on other planets. So, one of these creatures, so most of these creatures are called, not aliens, not aliens. They are called extremophiles, which lives in the most toughest environments possible, such as the hottest hot springs, the mouths of volcanoes, the the pressures of the deep sea and so many other places that you can't survive, such as, well, I guess, outer space. There's one creature and so many other more that can survive in outer space, the tardigrade. The tardigrade is living absolutely everywhere and you can even find them in your own backyard or inside a building, anywhere. So, scientists have done this experiment before astronauts went onto the moon. They have sent tardigrades onto the moon instead and they are proved to be alive when, when hydrated. Thank you so much for that story but again we'll have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. We'll be back soon.
Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are in discussion with Alosha who is a young marine biologist and also Nethila who is an entrepreneur and the founder of Masspreneurs. Alosha, now I wanted to ask you, has the, your social life been affected in any way by studying marine biology? Uh, no, not in any way but the only effect is I got a lot of support from my friends, family and everyone else. Great. Nethila, also I wanted to ask you, like, do you think there are other young people just like you who wants to run businesses as well and are there any challenges that they are facing that they can't come up to this level? Yeah, so I am sure there are maybe right. millions of uh, kids like me because when they look at movies and uh, like let's take an example, let's say Batman, he's a, he's a billionaire in, in the movie and uh, people are looking at, oh I want to be like him. I want, to, I want to be rich like that. So, there are lots of children who are like thinking like that in a fictional way. In a, by looking at movie characters, they, are, they want to be like that. So, in a way, yeah, there are many people who want to run a business and be, uh, be successful. And, uh, and I encourage them to do that. I want their parents to be, more, to be more open about it. I want their parents to encourage them to do things like that. Because when they start at a young age, it's an advantage for them. How do you think that this should be done, encouraging parents to send their students in a path where they are really passionate about? Well, basically parents can look at the, what skills that their kids have, like skills such as like if they have a skill like, like any skill they have, like musical skill, like parents should look at the skills that their children have and they should help, the, help their children sharpen those skills. That's how you could help them. Coming back to business, Nethila, now you are doing a business uh, and how has it been so far? How much have you been earning and has it been good so far? Has the pandemic affected your business? Not at all. Uh, yes, it, it is affecting my business in a good way because it's, it's everybody is on social media and they are all looking at my posts. And recently lots of people have been looking at my LinkedIn. I just opened it up uh, yesterday and I see that 4,500 people have looked at my profile in that day, in that one day. So. It's it's very good to see that my I'm 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 continuously growing and not uh, downfalling, and uh, can you uh, yeah so lots of people are looking at my LinkedIn, and the way it's affecting my uh, Masspreneurs Business Academy is it's it's a good thing everybody is on social media, and my earning yeah my income so for the past two years I've earned about one hundred thousand rupees from competitions, uh, stuff like that where I speak. What sort of competitions? Well, there was a certain competition where I, I, show, I showcased a skill of mine, which is stop motion, uh, stop motion where I uh, bring in some Lego characters, I lay down a giant platform, I take my dad's phone, put a tripod set up, put some lighting on, and I make a small animation, frame by frame, it takes about 800 photos, very time consuming, but a small, a small stop motion. And I and people saw that and they were like, hey, hey, you have a great skill. They invited me to this small ceremony and they gave me this twenty-five thousand rupee giant check. Yeah, so it's important to know that you know there is a supportive system behind your success. Yes. Alusha, now I wanted to ask you. Uh, you say you're an inspiration to all the young the children out there and you're spreading awareness about pollution of the marine and also protecting sharks. Do you think that simply making people aware about the pollution is enough to stop it no i think we should take action like for plastic we can use the simple step of reduce reuse and recycle the three r's this can be used in plastic to stop plastic pollution because it's one of the main things that affects our oceans do you think people are doing this right now I, I think most people are doing it. Okay. Uh, Nethila, also uh, next question for you. Now, how do you encourage other students to join you and spread your word of entrepreneurship skills? And what can you tell to them? A word of encouragement to the students and the children out there. To all those children, all those uh, kids who are, what, uh, who are watching and they want to be successful entrepreneurs, I'm sure they should all, they all have supportive parents. I, I would basically encourage all of the parents to be supportive about their kids, help them sharpen their skills, support them on whatever path they are going, if they want to become successful, help them, uh, connect them with other, other kids and other entrepreneurs 
and also uh, I watched this uh, small show on YouTube called Shark Tank and I'm sure uh, there are lots of other kids who are watching that too because it's a very interesting show where there are these, uh, there's this panel of judges, uh, pitches and there are these people coming, there are these people who launch, uh, who, launch, who have a business and they need money. They come onto the stage and they pitch their startup. They talk about what are the advantages they have, uh, how much money they have earned. And those sharks, uh, they, are, they are called sharks because uh, it's, the show is called Shark Tank. And sometimes there are these crazy scenes where they all fight over who's going <laughs> to get the deal because, the, because that company is so good yeah. that, that they literally fight over it. So the, I encourage these kids and their pa and parents to watch these kind of shows because they are really encouraging and you can learn a lot from them. Do both of you plan on, you know, expanding your knowledge in different areas as well? Now, Alosha, you are studying marine biology and you are studying about entrepreneurship uh, skills. Do you plan on going beyond this area someday? Yes, I do. Because I, I learn a lot about zoology, astrobiology, uh, microbiology, plant biology and uh, so many unimaginable things. What about you, Nathila? For me, it's maybe. It's a maybe. It's a maybe. Why? Why do you say so? Because so you're enjoying this. Because right I'm now. really enjoying this, and I don't think there's something really better than this. But maybe one day I will, perhaps I will come across. But for now, I'm really enjoying it according to the part I'm going. Because in in two years, in just two years, I was appearing for the past two years. Well, so two years ago, I was talking in one of my dad's YouTube videos, and look at me now. I'm I'm talking at other than. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Alusha, what would you like to say to the children out there who are trying to make a change in this society and they feel that you know something might be blocking them? Now you are out there in the world, you're on the internet, you have your own YouTube channel, spreading your awareness. What sort of words can you tell to the children out there? So you can do what you love without any fear or doubt that other people will judge you and you can make sure that they will make you go on your journey and I have lots of other things to say it's okay you can tell me a little a little bit more on that so you can expand your knowledge on different different subjects not only one Nethila there's some problem which I identified here in this especially in Sri Lanka, you know, uh, children don't have the finances or their parents don't have the finances to fund their business even if they wanted to do so. What advice can you give regarding that? Well, uh, the, it's something very simple. Uh, it's called bootstrapping. When I started out, uh, we didn't have a camera crew. We didn't really have these lighting and uh, all these, uh, lot of, a lot of tech. Uh, but my, fa my brother, he was, an, he was a good editor. And he also happened to have a small Canon camera and a small stand. So we managed with that. That's, that's how I started. That is called bootstrapping. Managing with whatever resources you have. And maybe we spent a little bit of cash, but we didn't want to spend a lot. So we managed with what we had. We managed with the laptop that I had. We managed with the resources that we had, the laptops, the keyboards, all of that. So that's bootstrapping, managing with what you have. And you can do it. It's very simple. All right. So what... What can you say about the facilities we have here in Sri Lanka? Because most of the students don't have this. Do you th still think that there's a way for them to do this? I mean, you don't even need a camera. You can just use your mobile phone. Because there are many YouTubers, those, uh, those YouTubers who became uh, fa famous, those singers who became famous. All those people, they started out with, maybe they started recording on a mobile, recording themselves on a mobile phone, singing a song. Or those... Uh, People like Elon Musk, they, Elon Musk uh, also came from humble beginnings. So look at Elon Musk today, like launching rockets, he has a magnetic train, he has Tes he's the uh, creator of Tesla. So yeah, you can do it even with the resources we have in Sri Lanka. Alright, Alosha, I also heard that you are a part of SL Shark Kids. Oh, what, what exactly is happening there? So SL Shark Kids is actually a group that makes people aware of what sharks are actually are not a bunch of man killing monsters which is zero percent not true why do you say that because every time we look at the news there's always a shark attack somewhere or a shark has eaten a human being why do you say that they are not uh, predators because sharks are actually more afraid of us than we are of them so we see sharks as man killing monsters but i think sometimes don't sharks 
see us as shark killing monsters? In my personal information, that's a thousand percent true. Even though there's no, not a single number like that. So, all right. So, so SL Shark Kids has 20 group members in it. So, we spread awareness of what sharks are, like I said before. And we take action, like doing these methods. So, you can learn as much as you can about sharks. Do not use shark products. Reduce your seafood consumption and turn that into a stable amount. And use the reduce, reuse, recycle methods for plastic pollution. And you can talk to your local educators. Speak out when you see abuse. Go diving with sharks to learn their true nature. These are a lot of steps, but are very simple. I'm pretty sure that the people who are watching this has like a lot to learn from the both of you. But unfortunately, this is all the time we have on the show. And uh, thank you very much again for joining me and sharing your stories and your experiences here. And I wish you both of you all the very best. Thank you again. And that was our episode on Gen XYZ. We will be back again next week with another episode. Just in case you couldn't watch any of the stories we had today, you can always rewatch on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. Now today on the episode, these were just two great little minds. I'm pretty sure there are so many other children out there who just wants an avenue to express their minds and to showcase their talents as well. So the parents, elders, as we as adults have a responsibility to show them the path. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night.